Right, hello everybody. I'm going to do a video today on 60 to 40 millimeter converters for respirators and gas masks. So what do these do? It allows you to put a 40 millimeter NATO filter on a 60 millimeter NATO gas mask. Now these are quite common things, but weirdly, um, lots of people don't understand their purpose. I've seen lots of bad reviews for these, where people say I can't put a 60 millimeter filter on a 40 millimeter gas mask. That is really not the point of them. So why were these made? Well, basically. Um, here's a Finnish M61 and a US M9 sort of clone improvement. Now, this was a 60mm mask, and I've also got a British light anti-gas respirator down there, which is another 60mm mask. Now, 60mm was the standard with America and Britain, um, and a few other countries for a while, until they went to 40mm NATO. Now, the issue was for a lot of countries that, obviously, filters had changed to 40mm NATO, but their masks still worked that were 60mm and they didn't want to throw the masks away um, or make two lots of filters so the easy thing to do was to make a converter so obviously how this works as you can see the outside edge of this is the 60 millimeter size um, and then the inside of this bit is 40 millimeter so it's got a male 60 millimeter thread on it and a 40 millimeter um, female thread so how it works pretty simply you screw it into your 60 millimeter mask there we go, it's there, and then you've got your 40mm port. So what I'm going to do is just get the uh, Finnish M61 on. So as you can see, right, it's pressurising. So what I'm going to do now is assuming this filter still works, I'm going to thread this filter on. still seems to be pressurising. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is get my banana oil out and test does this seal work. So, can't smell any banana oil. Just get that up there. Can't smell any banana oil. Right, can't smell it at all. So, this is working absolutely fine. So, Basically, I'll get the mask off again in a moment to talk to you, but this whole thing is a very simple thing. And I can smell banana oil straight away when I've taken the mask off. So basically, all this thing does, as said, is it allows you to put 40mm filters, which are modern standard NATO ones, on 60mm NATO old masks. So, again, the whole point of this thing simply was that masks had modernised to 40mm NATO and basically lots of nations still had 60mm masks and while they might have started making new 40mm masks they'd have had loads of old 60mm ones around that they obviously use for reservists or whatever else and they didn't want to throw the masks away and they also didn't want to have to build both 60mm filters for the old masks and 40mm NATO filters for the new masks so what did they do? Just made either metal or plastic ones of these very very simple they work absolutely fine so there's not on this side an actual um, kind of rubber seal or anything but it looks like there is a rubber o-ring on the 40 millimeter NATO side now a few nations did other things as far as I'm aware the Dutch had a mask I think it might have been called the Model K where it had both a 60 and a 40 millimeter intake so how that one obviously worked was you had a female 60mm intake plug, um, which would have had a 40mm screw on the inside of it as well, um, sort of on a little ledge I guess. Um, so the idea was a 60mm filter would screw in, and if you've seen 60mm filters, I don't have one in my hand, but they'd obviously have the sort of bigger ridge around there, so that would screw in, and you'd obviously have all that. With a 40mm one it would screw onto the inside bit, and it would work that way, so a pretty simple way of doing it. Obviously that's not practical on most masks to have a dual filter port. Um, obviously, like I was saying, a lot of nations just simply used these because that was more practical. Now, Britain, I don't know if Britain actually used these, but Britain used the light anti-gas respirator with 60mm filters for quite a while before, with the S6, they went down to 40mm filters. I know the Danes definitely used this, and I think this is a Danish one, um, because it came in my sort of British light anti-gas respirator, sold as surplus to Denmark. And then they, 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 uh, the Danes had these sort of with them. The reason obviously being that 
this is a pretty practical easy way of doing it I don't know if the finish actually uh, use this um, so I don't know if you can get um, you know fin versions of these but what I did see that the fins had is that they had one mask that was 40mm and one mask that was 60mm during the Cold War and they had a weird filter lid, um, like the seal for the filter, where it actually had kind of a converter as a lid. So I guess if you wanted to use a 60mm filter on a 40mm mask, um, you would just simply, you know, screw that in or have a vice versa variant of it. So there's that. So anyway, I'll just demonstrate this works again on another mask. So this is the mask I had. It came with a British light anti-gas respirator from 1944, as you can see there. So... You can do it either way around, but we'll just do it this way around this time. So screw that into there. That's your obviously 40 millimeter filter on there, and then get this mask. Screw this in. So obviously these work fine. I said I've heard people complain about them. Oh, I also think the Canadians use these with their C3s, which are very similar to light anti-gas respirators. Um, because for the same reason that, you know, if you have a lot of masks that still work in service, it's far, far cheaper to make plastic or metal ones of these than it is to, you know, completely take a mask out in and out of service for that reason. So, let's get this on if it still fits me. It might be easier to you know, bang my head on the filter to uh, pull this down. Right, so let's see if I can get this on and tight. Uh, there's definitely a leak around the chin. Right, I think that's air tight now, so... The mask wants to keep sort of pulling itself tighter to my face, which will break the seal, but let's try it again. Again, no smell. So... I'm just going to pull bits of my scalp off with it. Um, they work absolutely fine. So, if you are interested in getting these, I believe if you go on eBay and type in 60 to 40 millimeter gas mask converter, they turn up anywhere between about two to five pounds. So, not very expensive at all. Maybe there's a bit of postage on some of them. I've seen some that are metal and some that are plastic. As long as they've been made properly, they're going to work absolutely fine because it's a very simple thing. All it's literally doing is changing a female 60mm uh, socket into a uh, female 40mm socket. So it's a very simple thing. I'm sure you've used things like that of electrical cables all the time that convert one type of cable into another. It's literally the same thing with plastic or metal to work with a gas mask. And it works absolutely fine. Um, as I said, I've seen bad reviews of these where people don't seem to understand the purpose of them. They think it's so you can put 60mm filters on a 40mm mask. I have no idea why you'd want to use older filters on newer masks, but this is what they're actually for. So you can retrofit um, older masks to take newer filters. It's a very simple concept, but still one that a lot of people don't seem to understand. Anyway, hopefully this video on them has been useful. Um, as I said, I'll just show it you again. But you know, they serve a very practical purpose. It's literally so, you know, you can have your 40mm filter on your 60mm mask by using a very cheap thing. Obviously, again, just to go over why they were made, because lots of nations had 60mm NATO filters, which was the older standard, and then they obviously wanted something more modern. So, who might actually benefit from getting one of these? Basically, if you have a 60mm mask and you want to use it, and you definitely don't want to use 60mm filters for whatever reason, if you've got an old American M9 or a British light anti-gas respirator, you definitely don't want to use one of the old British or American 60mm filters, because asbestos and just the age of the filter. If you've got a Canadian uh, C3 or a Finnish M61, the 60mm filters that came with those, as far as I'm aware, other than chromium, were perfectly safe. However, due to age, lots of them won't work anymore. Um, so obviously, you know, that's one of the reasons you might want it. Because as I've said before, Finnish M61s are absolutely brilliant masks. Um, it's just a better version of the American M9A1. You've got your good inside peripheral face seal around the edge. You've got um, an oral nasal cup that stops it fogging up. A fairly good field of view. And it's nice, comfortable rubber with good straps. So again, if you've got one of these masks and actually wanted to use it, especially because you can buy these as surplus for like 10 to 20 pound range, you know, and that's a very good price for a mask. And then you get one of these for a couple of quid. You've now got this old, good, classic mask that works wonders that you can use with a 40mm filter.
So, you know, what's not to like? So hopefully for you, the people, you know, requesting videos on these converters that I guess just didn't understand why they worked or wanted a further explanation on them, this is all they were for. It was for nations that use 60mm masks that were kind of upgrading to 40mm NATO, but, you know, they didn't want to throw away all their old stock. It's like why Polish FP5 filters were normalised, so you could use the same filter with the old Soviet uh, Gost style masks, or the Warsaw Pact Gost style masks, and the modern NATO masks, so they didn't have to make two sets of filters at once. You know, what Poland also could have done was made a NATO filter, and then made a 40mm Gauss to 40mm NATO adapter, but again, that would be a lot of work. Why bother doing that when you can make a filter that fits both, you know, and cut down production costs? So, that's all this thing does. It literally allows you to use modern 40mm NATO filters on older masks. Now, people have said, is there a 40mm Gauss to 40mm NATO thread? No, not as far as I'm aware, other than ones people have 3D printed. The reason being that, like I was saying, other than Poland making a normalised filter, nobody really thought, well, we actually want to have, um, you know, old masks using NATO filter, or old Soviet stuff using NATO filters. Russia still uses Gost filters, just obviously like modern made ones. So there's not really a market for them. These didn't exist to sell things to people on the surplus market or anything like that. These literally existed because, um, you know, several NATO countries were upgrading and they wanted to retrofit older technology. It's kind of like if you had rifles that you then had the barrels swapped out on and everything else so you could update them to a modern calibre. A few nations did that with old surplus stuff, so it's no different than that really. It's like you're changing your calibre of your gas mask because, you know, the filter technology got smaller to 40mm. So, that's all they do. Hopefully the videos explain that clearly enough. Very simple to obviously use. You literally screw it into your 60mm mask, then you screw your 40mm filter into there. There's no magic behind it. There's nothing that's really going to break on these, as far as I can tell, as long as they've been made properly in the first place. They're going to work fine. As I said, if you're interested in them, they turn up on eBay. 60-40mm um, to 40 millimeter gas mask, filter converters, type in anything like that, you should find them. And sometimes if you buy an old surplus mask that's in 60mm, you'll get one in the carry satchel because several nations use these, even metal or plastic ones, as said, to retrofit their older masks so they didn't have to get rid of them as quickly. So there you go. Hopefully this video has summed up perfectly what the 60-40mm to filter converter was for and why it's actually a good thing to get.